Good morning, traders. Good morning to everyone. Today is Friday, last trading day of the week. I hope everyone is uh, experiencing a good trading week so far. So, as we always say, this, uh, this content is for general information only and not intend to provide any trading or investment advice. Just guys, please make sure you subscribe to Telegram channel. If you haven't subscribed, yes, you can find us like this at Admirals. So you can get notifications whenever uh, we are going live and for all the events. Uh, for those you haven't follow us on YouTube channel, please do it. It's really important. Uh, so you always get the notifications when we upload videos and, and when we go live as well. Now, the promotion we are running just very quickly is we're reducing the spreads around anywhere between 15 to 25%. So just uh, make sure you get involved with these currency pairs if your uh, trading applies it, if your trading plans confirm, so you can get the benefit, especially if you're an intraday trader. Now, what's for today on the news? we have the one of the most important <coughs> excuse me news event uh, announcement and that's the non farm payrolls for very quickly for those you uh, maybe joining us for first time or you are doing trading and you don't know what this news event is non farm payrolls it's a news release every month the first friday of every month unless uh that Friday is the first uh, day of the calendar month. So they move it to the next Friday, like we have uh, for July. And they measure how many jobs added or lost during last month. So, uh, and if we can take it one step further, we can understand that if more people uh, higher in a job and they have earnings, it means they're going to spend more to buy goods, to buy clothes, to buy food, uh, to buy cars. So the economy, um, so taxes are being paid. So uh, the country's economy is getting better and more stable. So it's an important measure of the economy's growth and stability. Uh, so we see that last month we have 390,000 jobs added. This month we expected to have a drop. So if the actual number today will confirm uh, this number here, the forecast, it means most likely we can experience a weak US dollar. And because as we said last session that many of the US dollar pairs uh, are on extensive impulse moves. So we most likely can experience some retracement as well. So let's go to the charts. All righty. Guys, just to double check, can you everyone see my screen, the drawing tool? Please confirm, just drop a quick yes. And good morning to everyone who join us now as well. All good, perfect. So pound US dollar, we are on the four hour chart. We see that the market made a new lower low here. I hope everyone can see it. This low, this low here is lower than this low here. So, and this high is lower than uh, 
this high here. So we can expect to see some bearishness in this in this pair. Now we are in the middle of nowhere. So I don't have a clear picture about entering a trade right here. Regardless, we have this bearish engulfing. This is a bearish engulfing formation. It means the buyers, they try to push the price higher and the sellers uh, next session instantly, they pushed all the price uh, and they reverse them lower. So if we go on the daily chart, do we have anything here? We are just trying to bounce through the nine moving average, exponential moving average. Last time the price bounced uh, through the moving average, it penetrated the nine and it came all the way up to the 20. Same happened here. So I wouldn't trust this moving average as a solid uh, resistant area because in the recent past, the price went through this moving average here. So uh, I prefer not to get involved at this stage, but it's a still good pair to keep an eye as we said as well last time. Euro US dollar daily chart. Finally, we broke through with this bearish candle here. The price is printing lower highs and lower lows. We are into this impulse move. So when we are already deep into an impulse move, uh, it's not recommended as technical traders to instantly jump on the trade and uh, execute in the middle of nowhere. Usually uh, I'm waiting as my limit order here. I have a limit order at this level here. If the price come here to get me into the trade and uh, hope for the push to the downside. I have a question here. Hello, Theo, what are the EMAs are you using, please? This EMA here is the nine EMA, Karim. That's the nine and that's the 21. With blue, I have the nine, this one here. And with red, I have the 21 and they are exponential moving average, yeah. Australian dollar, US dollar. Australian dollar broke through. We talked about this descending triangle pattern. Finally, we broke through. The price didn't move away instantly from this level. It means uh, there are not aggressive sellers in the market. So uh, the price tried to came up to retest the broken support now up as resistant. Uh, if it, it done it one time, remember we talk on the four hour chart, it's much clearer. So here we are, the price make a lower low. We had these lower highs. So at this area here, we were looking for shorts up to this level here, that was a take profit to retest the last swing low. Now the market is, now the market make a double bottom here. If we take in consideration this as well, we have a triple bottom. So this level here looks like uh, a strong level. If you draw trend lines, here is an, a trend line. So we are trading in between these boundaries. Uh, we will see what will happen. So far, we are in the middle of nowhere to initiate any trades. And guys, just keep in mind when we have the non-farm payroll uh, announcement during the London session, the market tends to just move a bit of sideways. And during the New York session with a news release, we have uh, directional moves. USD Canadian dollar, we talked about that particular pair. 
and it was more clear on the four hour instead of the daily chart. And guys, sometimes we can see the picture better on the four hour chart instead of the daily chart, sometimes the opposite, sometimes on the weekly chart, we can see the trend. So we're just playing around with few time frames uh, to help us understand where we stand at that particular moment in the market. So we said that the market put a double top here. The buyers at this level, they didn't manage to break through though they were coming with big momentum you see these candles here too much volume the body of the candle reveals the activity to place at that time so the activity was massive and when we say activity we mean how many contracts they've been bought or sold during that period and uh, the sum of the lots of the contracts been bought and sold reflected to the with the body of the candle okay that's very simple explanation for you to understand so we see too much volume too much momentum drove the price to the upside we make a higher high here on a pullback the buyers were unable to break through again for third time so at this point here we expect a bounce and if you are using fibonacci retracement it's a powerful tool in trading, which I'm using. So I want to measure the retracement as and if the retracement uh, match with a level of support on the chart, horizontal support or resistance, then I'm happy to take trades. Uh, however, again, because today is this event, the market didn't make even a higher high. We are not in a clear uptrend. So, uh, I prefer just to stay away from this move. Although it's a good move, I won't participate with that because of this event. This event today can spike the market in either direction. It, uh, it done it many times in the, in the past. And uh, I prefer just to sit tight until the news event will finish and then I will see if there is any move to participate. US DJBPY. What do we have? We are still hovering around this area. You see the price here is consolidating for one, two, three, four, five. That's the that's the sixth trading day. So from last week, uh, middle of last week, the price started to consolidate here. It didn't move to the downside, it didn't move neither to the upside so we're just waiting uh, if you recall from our monday analysis we saw that the bodies here are very tidy they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller buyers they get rejected we are in an uptrend obviously but uh, here it's been one two three this is the fourth week we don't see buyers continue this move so logical explanation it is to experience some pullback however we trade what we see and not what we think so what we see now it's just a sideway move and we don't trade sideway moves pound japanese yen again here we said it was a good opportunity to look for shorts at this area here target somewhere around here that movement finish already we can see it more clear on the four hour chart oh. on the four hour chart we talked last time about this lower low lower high could initiate positions from this point target this area here or some of you maybe are targeting down there uh, i didn't take any trades here okay so because I was in another Japanese pair, uh, now we put this bearish uh, candle in a line with the market structure, downtrend on the four hour, in a line with this trend line here, in a line with uh, a support. It's too many resistance, sorry. It's too many uh, factors of confluence, which 
can help this trade to move to the downside. Now I'm talking based on a technical perspective, uh, just purely technical analysis. Euro Japanese yen, we see that the Euro is a bit weak across the board. We can see it from its move to the downside, it's just moving lower and lower than the other currency pairs. So we are on the daily chart. Let's see what do we have here. We have a, excuse me, we have a series of lower highs and lower lows. Right now we came around this level of support. Uh, usually we don't tend to take the breakout straight. At least that's what I do. I don't take right on support to sell. I prefer to be a buyer on support until the market shows me the opposite, but um, I'm not into this trade, okay? On the four hour chart, we see that sellers, yes, they are aggressive. Minor pullback, which is good. Big seller here, big seller here, try for the breakout. We can, from this aggressiveness here and from this logic explanation and from a technical perspective, yes, we can experience and push to the downside. Uh, keep in mind, we are still in an uptrend on the weekly chart. We are at a critical area of support, but if this support is gonna break, uh, I'll, I can see this pair from a technical point of view to move and retest this weekly support, can act as support here. So that will be the first target if it's gonna break through. So we can keep that in our watch list. Uh, and on the four hour chart, this is more clear than on the daily chart. So we can keep an eye on that. Euro Canadian dollar was uh, the best performance in terms of trend entries here. We talked about that when we broke below with this strong close below this uh, major support. The market attended to retest here. That was a good entry and go for two, three, four to one, as much as you want. So for those who missed it and who are watching my uh, morning briefings and the webinars all the time, you could understand that this is a bearish engulfing candle. If you were around, you could enter here. You could have your stop here above the high, and then you are uh, in a good trade most likely you would have been closed your positions by now, but uh, if you are keep the trade, then it's fine. So on the daily chart, we see that we are deep in this move. Now we will wait as I mark this area here. Uh, I'm gonna wait for retest here. So another, currency pair for our watch list. Pound Canadian dollar, pound behaves uh, with a bit strength so far. And we see that the pound didn't broke below the support. Uh, however, we are still in this downtrend. The market is making lower highs. So far, we don't make lower lows but the buyers we saw uh, two times they stepped in and they were selling in uh, in an aggressive mode so we can experience some selling pressure at this pair to be honest we make this higher high on uh, on the four hour chart as you can see we have this higher high here I will see how the market is going to react if the buyers they going to step in around this level here. It's going to show us two things. Either the pound is very strong or the Canadian dollar is very weak. And uh, if you recall from the webinar I've done for you guys about 
correlation between the currencies, then you will uh, understand exactly what I mean. If we see that uh, pound, it's very strong, most likely across the border pound, it's gonna uh, show some strength. We can find, let's say a very weak currency, which now maybe it's the Euro and we can go to the Euro pound and try to enter there. You see the Euro is selling off comparing to the pound. It make a clear lower highs, lower lows. Here is your trend line. Here it was the resistance. A broken support we said act as a resistance later. Here we have this bearish engulfing candle. If you participated in this trade, you made two to one and that was a good trade. Sometimes guys in trading, we don't look for the quantity, we look for the quality. Uh, if in a month, let's say you're gonna have, you find um, five successful engulfings, let's say most of the times they are wave more, but I'm just saying the number five, five successful engulfings, which they're gonna give you two to one. So it means you risk, uh, let's say 1% uh, and you have a return of 2% every time you win. So this gives you plus 10% return, hypothetically talking. And if you're gonna lose the five engulfings, let's say you took another five engulfings and you experience loss, Every time you lose, you lose only 1%. So you are minus hypothetically talking 5%. So based on this example, you finish the month with 5% profit. Um, if let's say you're trading, like I'm trading an account of a 10,000 initial, uh, and I risk a little bit more than 1%, I risk 2% most of the times. Okay, but if I'm gonna take too many trades, I reduce it to half percent or one percent accordingly. But if I risk my two percent, which I do risk, uh, which is 200 euros on every trade, so five percent profit, it means a thousand euros. Okay, which is uh, a good decent profit for, for the month, according to this example. Okay, so sometimes, I know that as traders, uh, especially if you're a beginner trader, we are running after the quantity, but at some stage, if you take a step back and you're gonna start looking for quality trades, it's gonna massively improve your uh, equity curve, okay? Pound, uh, oh, Aussie cat, where did, no, we didn't say about the euros. Euro Australian dollar, we see that finally, we talked about that last time, we broke below this uh, low point. So on the four hour chart, that was a good entry with this pin bar here. Uh, I didn't take it, uh, this one here. So uh, we are still, in the downtrend, we are waiting to see where the market wants to stop for a possible resumption of this downtrend. Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, we see here another downtrend. Okay, we expect the market to continue trading at the lower prices. Pound Australian dollar, pound shows some strength. That's why this pair didn't move to the downside, although Australian dollar came a bit strong this week. So uh, it's nothing for here. Pound New Zealand. Uh, it's making, it tried to make lower lows, but with this rejection here, then the rejections at the top, we are just, trading through this, in between these uh, boundaries. So nothing much for that as well. Euro pound, finally we have a clear direction. Uh, this one here, I'm gonna move it it's closer. So we have this low point here. 
we will see if the market can push lower on the four hour chart. I will try to find an entry. So how do I find entries after I determine the direction from the higher time frames? On the four hour charts, I draw the trend lines. I draw some levels of uh, support where the market a broken support. Now we most likely act as resistance. So I would like to see the market uh, coming back to this area of confluence. If I draw the fib retracement, we draw from the high to the low, and that's the area I will be looking to get into this market. Do you see, guys, how I plan my trades ahead? So, uh, and I use only four things. I'm going to uh, explain you on Monday. So, because now we are running out of time, I will tell you my checklist, although I spoke in a webinar about that as well. You can go to the recordings webinar and see the institutional market analysis webinar I've done. So, all the New Zealand still sideways here on the daily, New Zealand, US dollar sideways here as well, markets trying to push lower. I'm not going to touch the US dollar pair at the least until the non-farm payroll announcement. Uh, Pound New Zealand, we talked about that, S&P. Someone asked for... XAU, let me see, do I have it here? So for the gold, gold finally broke through these low points. So I will wait for a pullback to initiate short positions from this area. So that's for the gold. We have the lower highs, lower lows. We are in a downtrend. If we go to the four hour chart, we can see that the market is still trending lower. However, yesterday the market was drifting sideways. The sellers didn't follow through. And that's clear because of the today's non farm payrolls. Traders, they didn't decide how they're going to get positions uh, into the market. However, if they still want to be uh, on the downside, this, they, th this time gives them uh more flexibility to go slowly slowly to higher price if they want to sell they prepare to be sellers from as high as possible okay so we're going to wait for the news event later on today good morning joel uh, has a question here morning do you always trade on the four hour time frame joel i trade on the daily charts and on the four hour time frames i will give you an example i think it was the australian dollar here on the on the daily chart let me find an example here okay this one here it's good now i'm on the daily chart okay uh, as i use trend lines here it's the one we connect two lines now i'm not going to give a lecture about the trend lines uh, because we run out of time but this is the area i was looking to participate in this market okay this price action for me we are in an uptrend on the weekly chart we see that the bulls they try to take control so here it was an area of interest for me on the daily chart if i see that we have a price action that the entry from the stop, it's only 30 to 50 pips. I will definitely take a trade on the daily chart. So I'm flexible with which time frame I use for entries. Most of the times, ideally, what I want to see, it comes on the four hour chart, but there are many occasions where like this one here on the daily chart, 30 pip um, from the entry to the stop, it it's a very, very, very uh, good consideration, put that way. 
Okay, so 30 pips here until to reach the last high, you are 240 pips. So you do the maths, you are about eight times uh, your, your risk. You gain eight times your risk if you are right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, guys, so I don't see any other questions. Uh, so it was pleasure to spend this uh, time with you today. I wish you to have a careful trading coming close to the news uh, announcement at 3.30. And make sure you register for the webinar on Monday morning, and I will see you then. Good luck and uh, happy weekend to everyone. Thank you.